In the last couple of videos, we looked at setting up the Ugreen DXP 4800 Plus NAS system from scratch as somebody who'd never used one before. We even went a step further and upgraded the RAM to squeeze a little more performance out of it when it comes to running virtual machines. And in this video, we're going to give it yet another upgrade. This time, we're going to fit two crucial P310 NVMe 1TB SSDs to use as cache drives. This should help speed up file transfers and overall responsiveness, especially with the 10 gigabit network interface in this system. Sheridan Computers, IT, communications, support. If you're looking to buy cache drives, I'll leave the link to the specific ones that I'm using, the PCIe Gen 4 NVMe 2280 M.2 SSDs. You can see the Ugreen NAS system behind me, so we're going to shut it down, we'll fit the memory, power it back up, and then configure it within the Ugreen operating system. First, let's log into the NAS through the UGOS interface. So you want to make sure, obviously, you've got no active file transfers and shut the system down so we can take the plate off the bottom and fit the drives. So in order to do that, I'm just going to head up to me up here, and then I'm going to go to shut down and shut down. So we'll wait for the device to fully power off. So it is now powered off. You can see, so what I'm going to do is turn it upside down. So be careful. We'll take this plate off at the bottom. So there's two screws to remove. Once we've removed them, you can see we have these two slots to fit the drives. So we're just going to take the holding screws out. And then this is where we're going to fit the two drives. So we have the NVMEs. Now, one thing to note, if you want to use for both read and write storage, you're going to need to fit two of them. If you only fit one, then you'll only get read storage out of it. You can see which way around this goes from the um, notch. The notch is here, you can see on this side. So it fits in that way. And again, same way. Then we just need to secure in screws back in place. So just hold it down. Screws back in. You recall from my previous videos that they come with these thermal pads for the SSDs. So don't forget, you're going to want to put these on. We're just going to peel the off and then stick them on like that. Same with the other one. Make sure you peel the plastic off first and just make sure they fit over the chips. Like so, and then we can go ahead and put the plate back on. Either put the two catches in first. I'm sure the lid was going to go on with them then. With that, we can turn the unit over and then give it a power it back up. So I'm just going to switch this on. And just wait for that to start back up again. Once you've fitted them, you're going to have to obviously configure them configure them in uh, the UGOS. So we'll do that once this power's back on. So it's not just a matter of plugging them in, and then you get your storage. You actually have to configure the drives. Should be straightforward. It's beeped, so I'm assuming it's started. And now if we log in, um, I haven't done this before, so head into storage. Now we've got hard drive one, hard drive two. Now you can see these... M.2 hard drive 1 and M.2 hard drive 2 have now appeared. To ensure they've both appeared, then we need to go head over here to storage. Then where we have storage pool 1, so you do this on the pool, we're going to need to go ahead, hover over the three dots, and select SSD management. Create SD caches for the volume to improve the read-write performance of the storage volume in specific scenarios. So no SSD cache, we'll go ahead and create one. Please select the volume, so this is the volume we want to cache. And then the caching mode, and we're going to do both read and write. And select next. And we have this warning, I understand the risk of data loss that you need to tick and accept. So what it's saying is, please select the read write mode carefully. Power failure, device malfunction, improper removal of hard drives, etc. may lead to data loss in the volume. Before removing the storage pool and SSD, please delete the SSD cache first. Um, so obviously don't be removing drives while you've got your caches. You need to delete the cache if you want to make any change. So go ahead and select confirm. And now 
select the RAID cache type, go on RAID 1, and then both drives. Estimated capacity, 916. It's just mirrored. Uh, so I'm going to do 916. I'll do 0.3, but let me do that. Yep. Okay. So we selected the volume, selected the hard drive and RAID, and allocated capacity. So SSD, cache 1, storage media, M2, hard drive 1, M2, hard drive 2. And the cache capacity is just under 1 terabyte at 916. Occupied system memory, 230. Cache mode, read, write, and select apply. Format hard disk. So these are brand new drives at this stage, it doesn't matter. What this is saying is obviously anything that are on these NVMe disks is going to be deleted so we can use it for our cache, which makes sense. Enter the password. So because we're doing something that could cause data corruption or data to be deleted, we have to enter the password. I like the way that they've set this up. There we go, we can see from the notices, creation successful SSD cache one. The system has successfully created SSD for storage pool one. And now at the side of this, where we've got volume one, you can see that indeed it does have SSD cache. If we go into the hard drive, see what we've got here. So now we can see M2 hard drive one, M2 hard drive two, SSD capacity temperature, and it says SSD cache one. So if we click on the dots here, we need to disable the drives here. We can just disable them by selecting this. We do a status test, and if we look at the details, as you can see we've got status normal, temperature, percentage used, and then unsafe shutdowns. And then basic attributes, you've got serial number interface, firmware, running time, start times, and your smart information. That's pretty much all you need to do. And now our cache drive is enabled. If you found this video useful, um, please give the video a thumbs up. It does help others find it. If you'd like to see more on New Green NAS, let me know in the comments. Consider subscribing to the channel to uh, keep updated as new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us for any IT consulting, head across to SheridanComputers.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.